Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Okay. Now, before you attack Does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hey everyone, DJ here. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and I wanna talk about the brand new Dominaria United set. I am so excited about all of the legendary creatures in here. There are so many to cover. I've picked a couple that I'm super excited to build decks around, and I think that you will too. Let's start off with the Ever-Changing Dane. The Ever-Changing Dane is white, blue, black for a 3-3 legendary shapeshifter. One, sacrifice another creature, the Ever-Changing Dane becomes a copy of the sacrificed creature, except it has this ability. This is the newest iteration of Half Dane. It's a shapeshifter capable of taking on different characteristics. Very cool flavor, but how does this work in a commander deck? Well, we're gonna be focusing on that ability, and the important thing is to note is that the sacrifice ability is gated behind a one mana activation. So there aren't very many opportunities to just go infinite unless you also have infinite mana. It also means that you have to sacrifice another creature, so you can't sacrifice itself and push its own death trigger. Speaking of death triggers, I'm immediately thinking of like Tasa Karlov. I'm thinking of Junji the Midnight Sky, the other dragons that have these fantastic death triggers. And I'm thinking about copying things and legend ruling them to death. Having the ever-changing Dane target legendary creatures is pretty cool because you can't have two of them on the battlefield anyways. You keep cycling through your legendaries, bringing them back again, legend ruling them out. You end up with a cool cycle of legendary churn. So I mentioned Junji the Midnight Sky already, but actually all of the dragon spirits are really good. We've got Kakusho the Evening Star, at one time so powerful it was banned in Commander. These other dragons are exceptionally powerful too. We have Kaiga the Tide Star and Yosei the Morning Star. Each of these dragons have crazy death triggers. Ao the Dawn Sky, Kari the Swirling Sky, and Junji the Midnight Sky. This time the Dragon Spirits have two abilities and it gives us a little bit more flexibility with all of our options. We also have some really powerful Cavaliers from the M20 Midnight Cycle. Definitely put some pressure on our mana, but Cavalier of Dawn, Cavalier of Night, Cavalier of Gales, all spectacular. You can also double dip on all of these death triggers. We've got Tesa Karlov running in here and also Radadurberkik of Urborg <laughs> just coming out from this set. Now it's not very efficient to just play six drops and use them for their death triggers, even if we're doubling them up. But if we can create this engine where we bring them back again, where they never actually die, well then we're actually seeing tons of value from these legendaries. Cards like Machaeus the Unhallowed, Luminous Broodmoth, and Lisa Forgotten Archangel each can provide their own spin on recurring creatures you've sacrificed to the ever-changing Dane. Of course, you can have cards like Phyrexian Reclamation as well, but having triggers go off when creatures die is the most important. A real all-star is Dawn of the Dead, which makes sure you get your creatures back from your graveyard for the ever-changing Dane to sacrifice. But if Dane is already a copy of a legendary creature, well, then you get a free sacrifice and death trigger. You can also go the route of negating the legendary rule with something like Mirror Box or Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. That's not really necessary for this deck though. Like you're totally fine sending things to the graveyard and bringing it back out again. I also really like Breathkeeper Seraph. Breathkeeper Seraph makes sure that whatever it soul bonds to comes back. This doesn't produce an unending loop, but it definitely gets you to move your way through tons of death triggers. If we have a sacrifice outlet built into our commander, we might wanna take a look at just borrowing some of your opponent's creatures and maybe end up, you know, sacrificing them to our commander. Stealing opponent's creatures are so cool. I love sacrificing them. It gives you a copy to keep. So stuff like Mind Flare, Soar of Temptation, Mareki Rebri, they can let you keep them and give this threat of activation, but then you also have the sacrifice outlet so you can reuse these effects. I'm also a big fan of Chamber of Manipulation. It lets you steal creatures to sacrifice at a low cost of just like pitching a card. And there's tons of reanimation in this deck too. So if you pitch a big fatty, you can bring it back onto the battlefield. I'm also excited about Nilhor. Okay, this didn't really get a lot of attention because there's a lot of bigger, flashier stuff in that set, but I think it's gonna be really cool. It's gonna give you creatures to keep or sacrifice. And the threat of a card like a Dark Awe Valkyrie, the activation can mean that you can take any creature, send them to die, but then keep the original on the battlefield. Coffin Queen is also really solid to steal stuff from your opponents and recur their graveyard. And then you can sacrifice them before Queen untaps, and then you can do it all over again. 
Otherwise, you can let Coffin Queen exile the creature that you nab from another graveyard. A card like Echo Chamber allows you to pick an opponent and then they choose to give you a token copy of the creature they control. Nowadays, creatures are really powerful and odds are you're gonna get something really good even if you're letting your opponent choose. Now we have all these different ways to steal things. We know we can sacrifice them to kind of keep a copy with our commander, but we can also start keeping copies with things like Thassa Deep Dwelling or Athreos Shroud Veiled. These can allow us to blink and keep, and so all of our theft is not just for one turn, it's something that really takes over the game and prevents our opponents from landing relevant creatures. Now this deck might come across as cute. You know, we're sacrificing our own dragons, we're recurring stuff, we are building an engine, but it's definitely not a fast engine. Well, whenever we have some sort of control deck where we're planning on getting tons and tons of value, we do want some way to end the game and not just with flying dragons. Let me propose a little combo that fits really nicely in this deck. I think that Gravecaller, Phyrexian Altar, and Altar of the Brood is a classic combo and fits really well in this deck. If you have these cards on the battlefield, you can make your commander a Gravecrawler. Not a very nice upgrade, but crucially, it becomes a zombie. Your original Gravecrawler goes to the graveyard, and then you can bring it back for just a single black mana. Value. Well, the trick there is that you sacrifice it again, but this time to Phyrexian Altar, producing one black mana. That's the exact mana you need to bring it back onto the battlefield again. All you need now is something to interact with that graveyard, battlefield, graveyard, battlefield sort of loop you've built up there. Altar of the Brood is perfect because it just mills everyone out. And mill is a particularly nice way to do this too because you do have ways to target your opponent's graveyards with the graveyard recursion theme. And so that's a little bit better than say a blood artist. We talked a little bit about recursion in the graveyard, but I also wanna mention Remembrance, Mortuary, Haunted Crossroads, or the Cauldron of Eternity. All of these can synergize with our big graveyard strategy and always give us creatures to play. And then if you have the right man on the battlefield, you can loop Nim Death Mantle. It might be a lot of mana to get going, but Nim Death Mantle can create loops. And by the way, you don't even need to go infinite with Nim Death Mantle. You just need to bring one of those crazy dragons back over and over and over again to just sort of like drain the table. Just imagine like three sacrifices of Kakusho and it's like crazy. Let's talk about a few fun highlights. I like Bane, Lord of Darkness. One white, blue, black for a 5-2 legendary creature dot god. As long as your life total is less than or equal to half your starting life total, Bane, Lord of Darkness has indestructible. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, target opponent may have you draw a card. If they don't, you may put a creature card with equal or lesser toughness from your hand onto the battlefield. This puts people in a really difficult and fun situation. You're constantly sacrificing creatures and they're wondering like, Oh, do they have another? Sometimes it's like given information because you have so much churn with your graveyard. Uh, but I really like this new angle of attack and card advantage, especially when we're already sacrificing tons of creatures. Let's talk Tivit Seller of Secrets. Tivit Seller of Secrets is three white, blue, black for a 6-6 legendary Sphinx Rogue. It has flying, ward three, and council's dilemma. Whenever Tivit enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, starting with you, each player votes for evidence or bribery. For each evidence vote, investigate. For each bribery vote, create a treasure token. While voting, you may vote an additional time. This is a pretty popular new commander card from the pre-con Streets of New Capenna, that obscure pre-con. Tivit is a great way to provide this sort of big mana ramp. I can imagine Tivit coming into the battlefield, you sacrificing it, you smack in with your ever-changing Dane, and then suddenly you have a handful of treasures and enough clues to make sure you never run out of cards. I'm also a fan of Body Launderer, two black black for a 3-3 Ogre Rogue with Death Touch. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Body Launderer connives. Whenever Body Launderer dies, return another non-rogue creature card with equal or lesser power from your graveyard to the battlefield. Buddy Launderer is another part of the engine. You connive, you dump things into the graveyard, and then it's gonna die eventually. In fact, you have ways to kill things really easily and sacrifice Outlaws in this deck. And so when he dies, you just get back something small, but really relevant for your strategy. Have you ever drawn a land and wanted it to be a ray of command? <laughs> Overtaker is one in a blue for a one one. It's a spell shaper. Three and a blue tap, discard a card from your hand, untap target creature and gain control of it until end of turn. That creature gains haste until end of turn. 
Uh, this being instant speed is really, really sneaky because it means that your opponents can't easily attack you. You can just steal one of the attackers and use it to block something else. It's, it's pretty solid. But remember, you have all these sacrifice outlets. You can take a creature, sacrifice it, have your Dane become a copy. And so everyone's afraid to put anything really big onto the battlefield. Overtaker is just another piece of that puzzle. All right, let's end with a spicy one. We've got Pulse Mage Advocate. Three and a white for a 1-3 Cleric. Tap, return three cards in an opponent's graveyard to his or her hand. You give them three cards back. That's huge. But return target creature card from your graveyard to play. Sometimes that's big enough to overcome those three cards, but I really like using this as a political tool. You are really teaming up with someone. People are going to love to get three cards back. Uh, of course, people with really, really stacked graveyards, sometimes you can just return three lands, and three lands might not be consequential in your game at all. Remember, you've got some mill strategies going on here. Uh, you can also hose people's graveyard. That's a really fun thing. If you've ever had someone do some graveyard shenanigans and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna let you draw those cards instead of reanimating, that is a fun corner case too. So what do you think about the ever-changing Dane? It's got great colors for reanimation, recursion, flicker, value the entire time. I really like the focus on these death triggers. Uh, Tasa Karlov is an insanely fun commander to play, but it might be a little bit limited in terms of color. Adding blue and adding a sacrifice outlet to your commander means that you can play that same game plan, but with a little bit of expanded toolbox. I like that. All right, hopefully you like the ever-changing Dane, and if you do, go ahead and pick up a copy at Cool Stuff Inc. They're the sponsor of the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and when you do, use the coupon code JUMBO5 to save 5% off your order. I also want to thank my patrons. They're amazing. Thank you, patrons, and thank you for watching. Big shout out to Mike Croza, who helped me out with this episode, at Mike Croza on Twitter, or you can find him at commandersherald.com. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye-bye.